The court will come to order. The world versus Jehovah's Witnesses for Crimes Against Humanity. This is a preliminary hearing to establish who the leaders of Jehovah's Witnesses are. Day 2. Mr. Zalkin, please call your next witness. The prosecution calls to the stand Jared Lush. Please state your name for the court. Get it, Lush. I understand you weren't always a Jehovah's Witness. What organization were you most proud of being a part of? My experiences with the Boy Scouts. The Boy Scouts? Tell me a little about that. When I was seven years old, I became a member of the Boy Scouts Youth Movement. The Boy Scouts are a worldwide organization founded in 1908 in Great Britain by a Lieutenant General of the British Army, Robert Stevenson Smith Baden Powell. In 1916, he founded the Wolf Cubs or Cub Scouts for younger boys in my age group. Thank you for the Boy Scout history lesson. You sure know a lot about the Boy Scouts. Did you ever attend their special meetings? Since 1920, international scout meetings or jamborees have been held every few years. I attended the 7th World Scout Jamboree in Bad Ischl, Austria in August 1951 and the 9th World Scout Jamboree in Sutton Park near Birmingham, England in August 1957. On the latter occasion, some 33,000 scouts from 85 countries and territories were present. Also, about 750,000 people visited us at the Jamboree, including Queen Elizabeth of England. To me, it was like a worldwide brotherhood. It's interesting that the Boy Scouts have their own serious problems with child sexual abuse, and so did Jehovah's Witnesses. Tell us how you became involved with the JWs. In the spring of 1958, I was about to finish my apprenticeship as a waiter at the Grand Hotel Wiesler of Graz, Austria. There, Rudolf Chigel, a workmate and pastry chef, witnessed informally to me. You were a Roman Catholic, but eventually converted to the JWs. Any particular reason? The Roman Catholic teaching of apostolic succession. How so? The Roman Catholic teaching of apostolic succession claims that there is an unbroken succession of popes in the line extending all the way back to the Apostle Peter. Go on. Catholicism also claims that the Pope is infallible in matters of doctrine when he speaks ex cathedra or in an official capacity. I believed this and thought that if the Pope, whom Catholics call Holy Father, is infallible in doctrinal matters, and has proclaimed the Trinity to be true, then it must be true. But if he is not infallible, then the doctrine may be false. No wonder that for many Catholics the teaching of apostolic succession is the most important teaching, since the correctness or incorrectness of other Catholic teachings hinges on it. That's interesting. So you concluded that, since the Pope is not infallible, that calls into question the correctness of all other Catholic teachings. Would you say the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses, also known as the Faithful and Discreet Slave, is inspired? The Faithful and Discreet Slave is not inspired. So, you are not inspired? There is no divine inspiration today. So, much like the Pope, how can you expect anyone to believe the correctness of all your teachings? <laughs> Seems like the governing body and the Pope have a lot in common. Okay, getting back to how you became a JW. I understand that women played a large role in bringing you into the cult. Two missionary sisters. One day the receptionist at the hotel called me and said that two ladies were outside in a car and that they wanted to speak to me. Ilse and Elfrida began studying the Bible with me in October 1958, and I was baptized three months later in January 1959. And you began special pioneering? I had no pioneer partner, but I treasured the support I received in the ministry from a sister named Gertrude Lobner. I'm seeing a trend here. Go on. I was assigned to a circuit where I met Tove Merete, an attractive single sister. Okay, we get it. You're a ladies' man. 
Thus began a special relationship. Merete and I, sometimes during winter time, we had to sleep in unheated bedrooms with below freezing temperatures, stiff and white from our frozen breath. Missionaries, electric. I liked our weekend campouts in the country, sleeping in tents, wearing uniforms, and marching to the sound of drums. I particularly enjoyed the evening and playing games in the forest. Okay. Once we woke up to find that the upper end of our blanket was stiff and white from our frozen breath. So on Mondays we usually stayed in the same home where we had been serving during the week. And I never ever had to encourage her. Okay, we get it. Please, no more details about your love life. How did you become a leader of the JWs? We got married a year later in April 1967, and we were allowed to continue in the traveling work together. The following year, I realized that by Jehovah's undeserved kindness, he had adopted me as a spiritual son. Just like that whole... Boom! You're anointed. Continue. In 1976, we were invited to serve at the Austria branch office in Vienna, and I was appointed as a member of the branch committee. Toward the end of 1989, before the fall of communism in Eastern Europe, the governing body invited my wife and me to transfer to world headquarters in New York. In 1992, I was appointed as a helper to the service committee of the governing body, and since July 1994, I have had the privilege of serving on the governing body. Have you ever known anyone that has been accused of child sexual abuse in the Jehovah's Witnesses? Brother Theodore Jarras, a member of the governing body. Evidence is coming out that the governing body appointed Teddy while knowing full well the accusations against him. This was a great surprise for us. What do you like most about being a governing body member? I love to attend our international conventions where emphasis is put on learning about our Heavenly Father, Jehovah, and Bible truth. Bailiff, please play Exhibit A, Highlights from International Conventions. <laughs> I believe I am done here. It's clear Garrett is a leader of the Jehovah's Witness cult. Prosecution rests. All right. Defense counselor, your witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Brother Lodge, can you state for the court your relationship with the Watchtower Society? I do not answer to the Watchtower Society. Thank you. I just want to say how awesome your hair is. No further questions. The defense rests. Okay, another weird examination. The prosecution can call further witnesses tomorrow. It's hard to believe this cult has over 8 million followers. Sheesh. <laughs>